Hey crew, we're sort of reviving the channel today with a video from uh, that, that was basically requested by Chris Allman about reordering groups. So let's say you have these lists of things inside of repeating groups and you want to give your uh, users the ability to basically grab thing one here and put it between thing two and thing three. Uh, that is possible with draggable groups and there's plenty of applications for it and that's what we're building out today. So let's go ahead and I got started a little bit. Uh, I made these uh, data types, uh, things, store order, whatever you want to call it. Just make sure it has an index. I'm assuming it's going to have a title too, but just make sure it has an index. That's all you need. And I'm going to let you build those out and also add the plugin called Draggable Elements. Uh, you can go click here, add plugins, look for Draggable Elements and install that plugin. Uh, this is what it looks like inside the list. Okay. So basically what that does is it gives you these two little areas right here and I wanted to start by talking about those. Here's a drop area. Here's a drag drop group. The drag drop group is going to be yellow just so we can see what's going on. And um, the thing I wanted to talk about, you can make this element droppable and that will allow us to drop it inside this group and put stuff in our workflows. Okay. That's all you need to know for the drag drop group and drop area. You could choose to either intersect or fit. Intersect is if it's touching. Uh, if the outside border of this group touches anywhere on the outside border of this group, fit is the entire element must be obviously contained inside. And now we have drag drop groups. Okay. And next we're going to load a bunch of stuff in a repeating group here. Let's just go ahead and put this in here, center it horizontally. Let's limit its width because yeah. And then let's go uh, thing order, do search for all of my things store order. This is just the stuff that I showed you at the beginning, one through five, and it's going to load those. Uh, I'm going to make it single cell and full list so we can see all of them. And then I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and throw it inside of the repeating group. There you go. Now I should get five of these uh, basically droppable areas and I'm going to put this inside here. It can be uh, as a child of the of the group, which is interesting. These drag drop groups function as just groups and they're movable elements. So whatever I put inside here, let's say I put text and I put the title inside of this group, which is very similar to what we did here. Actually here I have two different uh, title elements, one for the dragon thing and one that just chills there. Uh, regardless. So let's go ahead and put in the title here. Parent groups, they, oh yeah, right. As any, type, as any type of group, sorry, I'm a little bit sick, so I'm not thinking straight today, but um, as any type of group, you have to load data into it for it to work, especially when it comes to workflows. So we're just gonna set those up here. And then parent groups, thing, store order, title, we're gonna put it here. I'm also gonna put in the index for reference right here. Dynamic data, parent groups, things, index, okay? So now we should see five of these groups and they're actually going to be able to interact between each other. I can grab this group and drop it in any droppable area that has the same thing type. Okay, and that's basically what we're doing today. And now to reorder them, we're just gonna do some quick maths on the index here. Okay, so the example that we're going to use is we're gonna take thing one and drop it between thing two and thing three. And we're gonna put it right here. And what we're gonna do is recalculate the index. When I did this, uh, I forgot to do one thing and that's sort by index so that when we change the index, it'll automatically resort the lists. Okay. So for that example, we also need one little, it's a mix of a UI element and an actual functional element. And we're going to go ahead and put that in here and we're going to call this number minus one. Okay. And number minus one is basically going to be um, current cells index. So it's going to be a number thing and it's going to be current cells index minus one. Whoever guessed that is a genius. Okay, next we're going to add a conditional. We're going to give it a color. Okay, so let's say we give it a color of green. Why not? And then we're going to go conditional and say when this drop area, so let's type in drop, and we're going to say is dragged over. We're going to actually give it, whoops, we're going to give it a background color that is green. And if it's not, we're going to give it a transparent background color. And to make it cute, we might as well just add a little transition here. Um, and basically, we're going to get some nicer UI out of it. Okay, so now we're storing a number and you can see, instead of the drop group, uh, in the example here, instead of the actual drop group changing colors, I just have that top line. I gave mine a gradient, you could do that too. 
Um, and basically it shows you where this group is going to be dropped. Here is going to be dropped between one and two. Since it's one, it's obviously not gonna move. Um, in our example is we're grabbing one and we're putting it between two and three. So naturally the index has to be higher than two and lower than three for it to resort. So what we're going to do, and this basically allows us to make an almost infinite number of changes because we have plenty of decimals, we're gonna take three minus two and then we're going to divide that by two and then we're going to add it to two. So basically we're gonna get three minus two equals one, one divided by two equals 0 0.5, and then we're gonna change this guy's index when we drop it here to be 2.5. And then we can continue to do that as long as there's enough decimals to do halves. And that's pr a pretty much infinite number of, of times, okay? So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna do two things in the workflow here. We're gonna go elements and we now have a drop area has a group dropped on it because we installed the correct plugin. And we're going to set this date and I'm gonna put it outside. So the repeating group, I'm gonna give it a state. And a state, if you remember, is just a variable that um, lives, uh, I can't think and do this right now. So interim math, a state is a variable that lives on a client's browser, so it's not stored in the database, it's much quicker, but you can do anything that you do in the database with a state. So we're just going to throw in that number difference, the three minus two, and basically we have to grab the three first. So this is easy because interim math is just going to be this drop areas thing is index. So now we've just pulled the three. Next we have to do minus two, so obviously minus, and then we have to go repeating groups and we have to list, right? All We pull the whole list and then we pull an item number. Now, which number is that going to be? That's why we put in the um, number minus one because if we drop it in this cell, we have access to the groups in this cell. So if we pick a number minus one, it will be the, n the number that of the cell that we drop it in minus one, okay? so the item number, we're looking for item number two, which is basically this drop areas number, which will give us two, okay? So item number, let's go back to our workflow, item number, and then we go number minus one's number. And then we're gonna pick the index, which will give us the actual index of that cell. So just to recap, what we did is we grabbed this three, and then we did minus, find an item in this list, that's index is this cells minus one and pull that index. And now all we have left to do is to divide that number that we got by two. Divide by two and I can put it here because um, the operations are sequential. So it will, it will actually do this minus this divided by two and it doesn't follow bedmas or anything. It'll just follow sequential uh, math like this. So now technically we should be storing 0 .5, 0 0.5 anywhere we put the group. So let's go ahead and um, check just to make sure. I'm gonna put a text here, and this text is going to check just the number difference. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is just to pull the state from the repeating group um, into a math, okay? So I'm gonna promise you that this shows 0 0.5, and then I'm going to actually pull two. So item, uh, list of items, and then I'm going to say I dropped it here, so I need you, I need your index, and I need to add to your index this number that we just created called interim math. So we're gonna go here and say element actions. Nope, we're gonna go data, make changes to a thing because we actually want this stored now. And we're going to, ah, uh, right. So we're going to make a change to something's index. And that something is going to be this guy right here. And to get this guy right here, we actually have to pull this data point, which we did not do at the beginning. So here we're going to go um, drop area and we're going to say thing store order. And automatically, because of the way Bubble sets up its workflows, whatever we're using as a dragging group is going to be uh, this uh, thing store order. So we're gonna make changes to current workflows thing store order, which is the one that we dropped into the drop area. And then we're going to change its index, right? And its index, like I said, quite simply, is going to be repeating groups thing store order list item number 
And like I said, we're pulling the second one. So whichever one we dropped it into, minus one. So let's do that. Number minus ones, number. Uh, and then we're gonna pull its index, which is currently two. And we're going to add the interim math that we did here. Let's go ahead and say repeating group it's interim math. Now what should happen if everything worked out for us is that we should grab thing one and we should be able to drop thing one. Oh yeah, it's because I put a group here. I was wondering why I was out of whack. And we're gonna drop it in here, okay? The math that should happen, I see, it, it works. Why did it disappear though? Don't we have a move back on this? Ah, behavior post drop, forgot to talk about this. Let's move it back, okay? And I'm gonna add a little button here and this button is just going to reset all the indexes so that we can make sure that we test properly. Let's make changes to thing. Current cells, um, our parent groups, thing store orders index will be, I can't, I have to put it in the actual cell itself. Select first parent, bring the cell down, put this here and actually, yeah, okay. Sorry guys, not the most organized. We're gonna change the index to be current cells index, okay? So now, just for testing purposes, I can actually come in and change the indexes back to wherever they are in the cell. So one, okay? So I'm gonna grab one and I'm gonna drop it in group three and then it's going to do the math, which you saw is already good because it's 0 0.5. It's this cell minus this cell divided by two. And then it should add that to thing one and reorder them. See, and this is our actual difference here. Now, if we do it again, we should have 0 0.25 if we grab thing two, and it should be two plus 0 0.25 because the difference is, you know, you know how to do math, I'm sure. And there you go, 2.5, 2.75. And you can keep doing this as many times as you want and it'll just divide by two and add some decimals and reorder the things properly wherever you drop them. And that's how you do a reordered list. It's nice though uh, for you to add a recurring workflow or something, uh, an API, a scheduled API workflow to uh, reset your indexes or make change to a list of things so that you don't have a bunch of decimals hanging out because um, it's actually more costly on performance when you have these long numbers. Not much more, but it's still more costly. I mean, dividing this many numbers by two is a lot harder than dividing an integer by two by orders of magnitude. So if you can, add something to reset these indexes, but the point is this will function uh, almost indefinitely and just keep adding index values uh, while you reorder things. Cool? Cool. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was useful and uh, have fun giving your users the opportunity to drag and drop and reorder their lists. Cheers.